What's up, guys? Welcome back to the Eight Limbs Podcast, episode 28. Today, we are joined by the one and only, my man, Mike Misa, undefeated pro boxer with a record of 7-0-1. This guy is tearing up the local circuit in our area in the Tampa fight culture. Super cool human being. Mike embodies a fighter as far as his training and his lifestyle, but he's like the sweetest, nicest guy in the world. So it's like this blend of two people in one. It doesn't make sense. <laughs> if you met Mike and didn't know what he did, what he did, and you had a conversation, you would have a really hard time believing it was the same guy knocking someone's <laughs> head off in the ring. So we're going to get to know him a little bit, find out what makes him him. Welcome to the show, man. Thank you for having me. I appreciate your time. Yeah. So yeah. let's let's talk first about why fighting. Like, what drew you into combat sports? And it wasn't just boxing. You've done a little bit of other things, too. Uh, I've dabbled in a little bit of everything. Um, I've done MMA, kickboxing. Uh, but, I mean, I've done contact sports my whole life. So I played ice hockey, like, ever since I was a little kid. Like, I've always been obsessed with, like, just contact, like, you know, like, the aggressiveness. And... Um, when I was around like 19, that's when I first started getting into martial arts. Guys, this episode of the Aitlums Podcast is brought to you by Cold Plunge. This is the Rolls Royce of all the ice bath units you're seeing now. It is all the rage and they by far have the most premium unit. It is beautifully aesthetic to look at. So anywhere you put it, you're gonna love to see it. It's gonna be calling you in every single day. The cold water gives you so much energy, removes inflammation, gets rid of your body fat, and just all around builds your mental toughness by getting yourself again in every single day. I love this unit. It is a set it and forget it type unit. You don't have to do much besides a little bit of water maintenance. If you're interested in buying one, use code 8 limbs at checkout. And the reason I did get into martial arts was uh, like, my, when my dad passed away so like that was kind of like a a big like um changing point in my life yeah and i really relied on martial arts to help me like guide me through like that whole process yeah and how old were you at the time uh i was 19 yeah, yeah that's a hard yeah. time to lose your dad yeah it was like just like when i was like ready to you know step out into the world become a man uh i'm an only child mm -hmm. Only same as my mom yeah same yeah. yeah we talked about that yeah yeah that's tough. So yeah, I'm the same. I, w I started martial arts when I was like five years old, and no my my dad was a lot older. So my dad had me when he was 63 years old when I was born. No way. And yeah, it's a wild story. But he did a good job of putting me into the things that he knew I needed. He mm -hmm. was like, I can't teach you this, but someone else can. I know you right. need it. So I got into martial arts early, and I was obsessed with like the karate and the kung fu. Unfortunately, most of my youth was spent in taekwondo, which was not a good use of the time. Mm -hmm. But Right after high school, I was the guy who did Taekwondo. I was still doing something, still practicing, you know. And then I then I found jujitsu early yeah. at nineteen, and I was like, "Hey, I like this a lot." And yeah. that kind of just the rest is history for me. Right. But through jujitsu, it's led me to watch you know MMA, and that's led me to combat sports. And then I started doing boxing training with you, and I met you at a fight gym, Kaizen. Right. The martial arts lifestyle is so interesting because it it can harness your emotions better than any other sport. Yeah, there's nothing like it. There's, you're going through yeah. something. You're you're sad. You're frustrated. You're angry. Your job sucks. You get to go into training and just zone in to that training yeah, session. Like just the world disconnect. disappears. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You're in your own little world and you can just really just focus on expressing yourself in yeah. the fullest. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's it. And it, it, exactly. It's like it's every single person that's a fighter is really just an artist. That's why it's martial arts. And they're just painting their canvas how they feel, what they see. Exactly. Different boxers are going to throw different set of combos. They're going to move differently. And like yeah. it's their own unique personalities being expressed through them. Exactly. Yeah. Everyone's an individual, just like anything you do in life. You uh, know? Yeah. yeah. So the martial arts, you started doing it at 19. Um, yeah. What was the most attractive part or martial art to you? What was it that brought you in first? Uh, so it was actually one of my best friends back home. Uh, he was a wrestler, like a big wrestler. And uh, we had like a group of like 10 of us and he was the only one that wrestled. And there was a gym called American Fighter and it was like down the block from our gym, just opened up. Okay. Um, Rich Franklin was yeah. like the oh, owner remember of it. Him. And it OG. used to be called like um, Extreme Couture. Yep. So anyway, uh, my buddy JP, shout out to him. He um, he brought us all into the gym and uh, like that was my first day ever. Like I never even watched a UFC fight, MMA, anything like that. So he brought us into this gym and like there was a jujitsu class going on. And then right after it was like Muay Thai and we did both classes and like we just kind of like wrestled around, like rolled around. And I was like, like, where do I sign? Like, yeah, I, I, I literally love like fell in love with the whole process. Yeah. And uh, my like all of my friends, like all 10 of them, like we we like trained like pretty consistently, like every single day for like maybe a couple months. But like I was really the only one that like really like stuck with it, like 
like I, I became obsessed with it. Like I, yeah. I went every single day, two times, three times a day. I was gonna say there's something class. like that that happened. So you know, in the years that I've been training, it's been 20 years now I've been doing yeah. jujitsu. I don't count the previous stuff. I've really counted it. It's been a lot longer, but I don't feel like I really started till I started doing jujitsu. It was like real mm -hmm. that yeah. way. When I started jiu-jitsu, people were trying to beat my ass. Then mm -hmm. I was like, oh, now I'm really training. Yeah, yeah, Ka yeah. Taekwondo was so different. Yeah. But I find that, like, people either love it and know day one this is for them mm -hmm. or they're going to drop off shortly. It's really rare right. that someone comes in and then doesn't come back and then goes in. We hear a lot of guys locally like that, you know, the ones that, like, they kind of train a little bit and they don't. And they kind of right, train. Right, they, right. They'll say they train and their yeah. Instagram will say they train. But, like, over the course of the year, how many sessions do they get in? And it's just because it doesn't really speak to who they are inside. And I feel like... People with pain, people with some sort of emotional issues, for us, it just calls yeah. it. Hey, I, I know this feels right. Mm -hmm. This episode of the Eight Limbs Podcast is brought to you by Newtopia. Newtopia is a, an amazing nootropic solution for any entrepreneurs or high producers out there that are looking for a solution besides the traditional Adderall or Alpha Brain. Newtopia is a fully customizable box with 12 different compounds. I have personally been taking this for years. I have my entire team taking this as well. And it's an absolute game changer. There's some days you want to be social. There's some days you want to lock in and get focused data entry work. And Utopia has a solution for you on any day. Use code Salazar to save 10% off. Something feels right about me going in there and, and going yeah. to war with somebody. And like, yeah. that's clearly your story with it, you know? Yeah. When did you start to realize that you weren't scared to compete? Because at first you're just training. Um, yeah, so I know earlier I mentioned that like my dad passing away was the reason why like I got into martial arts, but my, my friend like who introduced me to it, like I was training probably like for a good like four or five months before my dad passed and like, like even leading up to it. So I was like good when I started, you know, like, like there would be like, oh, like you should fight. And like, dude, like, you know me, like I'm like a shy guy and like, <laughs> I'm, I'm the same person who I was, but even quieter. And like they were like, oh, like you should definitely fight. Like you'll do well. And I was like, I would never, <laughs> never <laughs> yeah. in a million years like step out into. Like, I can see that. Yeah, that's what I, I mean. I, I don't like any attention on me at all. So um, when my dad passed away, um, like it, it just kind of like opened up my eyes to say like like life is like so short. Like even when I first started, like he was like, oh, like you should do it. Like he he was all about like you know like living in the moment, like taking chances, and he. Like he guided me in like so many ways in that. Like that's how he like uh, yeah. like lived his life. It's amazing. So like when when he passed, like I was like, you know, I got really nothing to lose, and uh, I just stepped into the cage, and that was that was that's history amazing. from there. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, I've heard people say that. I mean, my my dad passed <laughs> when I was fifteen. I didn't have that kind of freeing moment. I definitely uh, I I felt like hey, I have to start helping my mom a lot. I felt yeah. that, mm -hmm. but I didn't have that moment of like now I'm going to start competing because I was still younger. Right, but. That's huge to have that. And then so you start competing. You start, you start what, MMA first? Um, so Kickboxing. I was going to American Fighter, right? And then I actually transitioned into just jiu-jitsu. So I went to jiu-jitsu gym for like like a solid like six to eight months. And I started like competing in jiu-jitsu, like in like tournaments and stuff. I didn't even know that. Yeah, yeah, that's amazing. yeah. That's a, like, I love yeah, that. Yeah. Okay, that's my so, world. And then, but in the basement, they had, um, they had boxing. So uh, it was like a mixture between like kickboxing and, and boxing or whatever. But like, I don't know, like something about like just like striking, like really just like, mm -hmm. you know, I like settle with I find that people have a, a temperature setting that one thing is going to call to them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I love jujitsu too. Like I like, yeah. it, it was just like free flowing, like the endless, like, you know, mm -hmm. there was like just that whole learning curve is, yep. it was like, yeah. So something <clears> that when you, when you think about striking, uh, Shout out to our buddy Rob Walsh, Lucian, Lucian Rob. Yeah, Rob. He's actually going to be training tonight MMA. I might even make it up there to, to do some rounds with him. He just came back in the gym. I met him in Inside Control Academy. Yeah. Rob is a perfect example because Rob's a very nice guy. Yeah. And when I first met Rob, I was in the fight gym. He had just started in his 30s, never done anything before combat related. Mm -hmm. So when we would first start to spar, he was not ready to punch me yet. Right. And I was very ready to punch him. Yeah. So we would start to spar. Like, I, I've already been through all that. I, right, you know, right. It, it takes this little, it's like this threshold you have to break of like, oh, I'm going to really hit you now. Right, right, right. Not like you're throwing power. How much power would you say you throw in light sparring? 20%, 30? In light? Uh, popping? Yeah. Just popping yeah, shots. But, like 40, but you're still contacting yeah. Yeah, yeah, Your head's yeah, going to yeah, bounce yeah. a little bit. Yeah. But you're controlled. Like, yeah. I remember the first couple of times we were sparring, I would pop Rob's head with a jab or just pop him with a one, two. And he would look almost like his feelings were hurt. Yeah. Like, yeah. he's like, how are you going to do me like this? Right. And I remember I had to be like, you have to hit me back. Just hit me. Yeah. And then once he did it, you saw the switch. Like, oh, that felt good. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And then like, 
the rest is history. He'll let you know. Dude, he everyone's give a shit. like that. Everyone needs that push, and it was good that you were there for him in that moment. Because, but what is yeah, that? Why yeah. are people so tempered tonight? Because we're just so used to being nice, where we feel like, wow, I'm gonna hurt them. Because yeah, it's not a natural thing, like to like punch someone in the face. You know, it's like yeah, like you're like very like timid to do it. Like I feel like a lot of people like have that in their mind, like oh, like like maybe if they're stressed or like have like whatever, like they want to let out, but like to actually like follow through and like hit someone, like we're always taught that that's not. Like, right, right, you know. Yeah, so, but even in the setting, you could be gloved up, shin guards up in the yeah. room, but people are still. So I feel like that day, mm-hmm. their fr- someone's first sparring day helps you. You know a lot about them, but they know a lot about themselves now. Oh yeah, yeah. Because you're gonna now know, like they're gonna get hit, and it, hopefully it's not gonna be by a sixty percent thumpy shot by somebody, and that they get hurt. Right. But just getting popped in the face with several jabs, some yeah. people just that alone, they're like, I can't do this. Like, yeah, I yeah, won't ever yeah. do this again. Yeah. And I think it's good they know that early. Yeah. But I, I agree. Yeah. I mean, I feel like everyone remembers their first sparring session. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, right. Like mine, I felt like I was like fighting for my life. Like it was like. Yeah. Some gyms crazy. can be like that. Yeah. 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 Like, some gyms can be hard like, sparring. And- yeah. That was just my, my mentality. Like as soon as I got hit, like I was just like fight or flight. And I was like, and that's where like my coach is like, like you're kind of like, you're made for it. We just got to let you like he get saw you what into like, fight ta- ta- like. Ta- like calming down. Yeah. He yeah. saw what Mike's fight looks <laughs> He's like. like. You're, I get you're it. like a fighter. Yeah, you have heart. it. You yeah. definitely have yeah. the thing. I've, I've been to some of your live events now. And like the last one was something that I, that I, I was so proud to be there supporting you. And that was your only draw. Yeah. yeah that was, was the yeah. seven zero and one. That yeah. was the one. But yeah, it was dude, such a great, it was a fucking war. Yeah. I'm glad that you were there to like see that. It was like, shout out to my opponent, man. Like yeah. he, he was tough. Like, yeah. He was tough. Uh, I knew what I was going into, like like starting like with the fight, cause like we chose him, he was uh, number twenty in the country. So like I like, I mean I'm not here just to like you know kind of mm. take easy fights. Coast, like right, I, right. like I want to like actually like get better, like uh, challenge myself. Like I I really don't care like the outcome. Like I'm more just trying to grow as a person and mm-hmm. and get better. And I know that's just gonna level me up in in all of life. So true. There, Ido Portal. You know who he is. Who's the that? movement guy, Edo Portal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah. was Connor's movement guy, but he was big before Connor. Connor just made him bigger. Right. But he said something that's so unique, and I'm going to probably butcher it, but he was talking about how we have these levels of learning. So human beings have these levels. We're like a level one, which is like we know nothing about this new thing we're trying. We're, right. It's completely new to us. Uh-huh. Level two is we kind of know, but we're, it's all still a lot of mistakes are being made. And then level three is like, for you throwing hands now, it's kind of autopilot. Your coach can call numbers and you're just you're throwing, you're there. Right, right, right. So when we're in level three, we're not really growing in life. We're, it's we're just doing what we're good at doing, mm-hmm. which is why the guys who have big arms love to go to the gym to work arms. They don't like to go through hard leg days. Right. So it's like you get the best life benefit, not just fitness benefit, out of levels ones and twos where you right. suck at this thing, but you're still practicing and scrapping and learning and making mistakes. And people just don't like to be in those stages. Right, right, right. When you're coasting. Right? Yeah, it's hard. Yeah. It's hard. It's yeah. like, oh, I man, love that. Yeah. I have to do this thing that I suck at. And the whole session, I'm watching the clock. When's the clock going to be over? This sucks. You know, that's yeah. how people probably feel in yoga when they're big jack dudes. Right, right, right. You know, but <laughs> you know, we need to be in the stages. So that opponent, what was it about him that made him a challenge? Um, Just his, like, experience and skill. Like, you can, like... If you're a fighter, like you know when you're in there with like a fighter who like understands like mm-hmm. fighting, like uh, and like you know range. that when right away or by round one, uh, you know that within the first like you know exchange or like first like 15 seconds, like just like body language, like just how they come out and like present themselves, you know, like mm-hmm. like uh, their presence, yeah, yeah, like uh, presence yeah. is huge, like yep. even if you're not throwing, like your body language is so important in yep. boxing. And yeah. fighting in general. I remember Darren Till was the first guy I had said that. He was talking. Remember Darren Till, the fighter? Yeah, yeah. I love he was Darren doing Till. a big promo, and he was saying, he's like, people can say what they want, but when they're in there with me, they're going to be in there with the presence they've never felt before. He's like, right. my presence intimidates people. He's right. like, you won't know until you're in front of me, though. Yeah. And most people don't know what he means by that until... I, you know what until he means. There, he means yeah. like, when you're standing in front of me and you see how I stand and how I move, you're going to be like, oh, mm-hmm. I don't like this. Right. So he, you felt it with him. Yeah, I felt it. Yeah, like right in the first like exchange, and he really understood like uh, range. He had good movement, good defense. Like it wasn't just like I'm gonna come at him and just you know plow through land, him. land any punch. Yeah. Like I, I have to like th- like it, it was a thinking man's game. So like you hit him a lot. Yeah, I yeah, think you. Like, I saw his yeah. head bounce a lot, and he didn't yeah. seem to be as phased as I've seen people. I've seen yeah, people get no, dropped. No. That's yeah, yeah. that's something you think like some people just have chin, some don't. I don't know if there's a there's like a scientific reason why that is. Why some yeah. people can just take a shot? 
Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Some yeah, people yeah. just have a Neanderthal That's, head. And you're yeah, like, yo, yeah. you see him. Like Holloway is an example. Yeah. He can take shots and he doesn't get dropped. And and some people, can, you know, they have yeah. a, what, what you call the glass chin. Yeah. I felt early with him because I know how hard you hit. And yeah. I've seen you knock dudes out. Yeah, yeah. And I saw you land some really good shots. And I was like, damn, he's got one of those pit bull heads. Yeah, where yeah. like, it he, just, he doesn't seem to get phased by him. And like, yeah, ah, yeah. it's going to be a long night. Yeah, yeah. And so the, th- the cool part about it was that we were saying this. This is where I got to see how much you don't want to lose. Yeah. So the, I've heard Patrick about David say, he's like, the people who become super successful in life aren't the people who just love to win, mm-hmm. but it's people who can't stand to lose. Right. He's like, there's something to that. It's all fun and games to win. But then when two guys are fighting, playing tug of war, it's like, yeah. all right, fine, you can win. Yeah, but if yeah, you yeah. hate to lose, you'll let your fingernails break off before you let them tug of war. Right. Here. And so that's what I think I saw with you that night is the rounds went on. Yeah. You're going back to your corner. Both of you guys had this look in your face like, this dude's tough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you see, you're getting like, I don't want to say meaner, but your face looked meaner and yeah. meaner and meaner after each round. You're like, fuck this. Yeah, this is not going to yeah. be my first on my record. And exactly. You came out in the later rounds and just put so much out there. That's when I was so proud to be there, you know, yeah. supporting. So I'm like, look at him. Yeah. He can't, he's not going to let, just give up. What? Yeah. Where does that come from with you? Uh, I don't know. Like, I, you know, like in those Rocky movies, like where you have like the whole like like parody, like where they play back like everything you went through in your life. You know, yeah. it's like like that's kind of like a moment that I had in that fight. Like it was just like like a like the Izzy fight, like against Calvin Gastelum. Like he was like, I'm ready to die. Like I'm yeah, ready, I'm ready said to that die. Too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, I'm willing to die. Like I'm not like uh, yeah, I'll go out on my shield. Like whatever it takes, but yeah. like I'm not losing. Like, yeah. yeah, and you did it, and yeah, like yeah. neither one of you guys lost, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, but, that was, <laughs> but still, that, but how amazing the crowd was cheering! It was actually the fight after felt so. Mm, yeah, yeah. Because you guys had brought so much energy, the crowd oh, was yeah. screaming. It was such a hype electric environment in there, yeah. that's, and that's what that's why I do it too. Yeah. It's like just to like give you guys like a show, like a like you guys are paying a lot of money, like supporting, like a, like just anything, like it's entertainment, you know. Like yeah, that's uh, so true. It is here. Yeah. It's a way to do it. Everyone else goes there to those fights to support the people, but also to detach from their busy life, right? from their chaotic life. It's a moment mm-hmm. where they get to sit back and their problems don't seem so small when they're watching their bo- favorite boxer go out there and fight. Right, right, and right. And they're just like in, in it. That's what yeah. Dana White says that UFC, they sell <laughs> holy shit moments that pull yeah. you out of your life. Yeah. So when you, when you go out there to fight and it's time, what type of nerves do you feel? When it's time, like you're what? Do you have a screen in the back? <laughs> Are you seeing the... The pay per view and your, uh, or the some event? promotions have it. Like uh, I've had promotions where you can watch and like know you're up next, but like that promotion, no. Like it was just like me see so you're on deck, and then we're waiting in like the the hallway and just ready. And to then go all out. of a sudden you come out, and then you just see everybody. Yeah, everyone. Like that's that's my like one of the best experiences I'd say. Like like in the locker room, like like getting like warmed up. It's like. I'll walk you through like the whole process. Yeah, like, that's it. like in, in the beginning, right? Like you get there and it's like, I'm, I'm like a quiet guy. So like you're surrounded by like all these dudes who are like fighters and like most of them are like loud and like, you know, like, like talking their shit. <laughs> so like I'm, I'm the complete opposite. So like I'm very calm. So I'm like, I, I feel like I don't belong there in a sense. So I'm like, why am I here? Like, what am I doing? <laughs> like, like, do, I'm, like, I don't know if I like, if I met, made for this, you know? And sure. then like, uh, like once it starts getting closer, like they start calling out your name and then like I get my hands wrapped. Then like as soon as I get my hands That's wrapped, it's like I, I feel like uh, like I'm locked in. The grip, yeah. And then I, we get our gloves. We kind of like, you know, break them in. And then I start like warming up with my coach, like hitting pads. Um, like once you start hitting pads and then like everyone in the locker room is like kind of like, like who is that dude? Like, you know, like they, they start to see you. And then like that's when I start to feel like, okay, like I'm like I'm meant to be here. And like this is like my night kind of thing. Right. Yeah. And then like as like I'm waiting to get called out, like it's such a long process. Like even though it seems it's probably like it's long because you know you have to go fight. after. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> like, even when they call your name to like stand on deck, it's like it's the longest wait you ever felt in your life. Oh, yeah. And then once I get out there and like see all you guys, it's just like like it's time, you know, it's like you go through like this whole emotional roller coaster where it's like you're scared you're you're like but as you get closer to the ring you're like my confidence just like kind of like builds like i'm like i'm i'm ready to like i'm ready for whatever but like i'm i'm ready to like give it mm-hmm. all i got and there's it's no huge. no nothing in life for me that can compare to that that's that feeling awesome. like walking into the ring yeah so so true right they say some people live and some people watch and yeah. it's like no matter what happens you're you're 50 you got your family and your wife and you're sitting back you're going to be like lived yeah you'll know that right not like damn 
I need to do something that scares me now. I did yeah. all that shit. Yeah. You yeah, know, yeah, and then yeah. you get to train your sons and you train uh-huh. the people to do it. Exactly. So you have a huge fan base locally and the support that I feel for you. Every time I've been to a Mike Misa event, the crowd shows up for you and screams and cheers. And you've only been in the area for how many years? Four, three? No, uh, two and a half. Three, uh, coming up on three years. So you've yeah. been here for three yeah. years. Yeah. Brand new transplant into Tampa area. Yeah. What What's the reason for that? Why you got some people love you? Honestly, what I, you? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> like how? But how? How I, does that come like, to be? I'm I'm honestly so grateful for it. Like um, like I I, I don't know like the reasoning why. Like maybe it's because I worked that crunch for a while and like that was like a big gym and like in like a like kind of like a yeah. high traffic area, you know. Yeah. So I kind of built like started building a name for myself. But I don't know, like uh, anywhere I go, like I I just try to like impact people like in like a positive way. Mm-hmm. Like I like you do. I wanna I wanna leave like a good impression on people. Like that that is important to me. And uh, I feel like if I'm just like a genuine person, then like that will kind of like translate into whatever I do, and people yeah. will support what you want. Like. Just yeah. through like what your passion is. People love you. And I got a question yeah. to ask you. I heard Andrew Tate say it first, and I think it made me think about this. So I've done jiu-jitsu for 18 years, and it's a big part of my identity in my life. And it's something mm-hmm. like a, a combat sports have attracted me. That's why I met you in the fight gym, right? right? At Kaizen. And I moved here three and a half years ago, right? After a divorce, I started my life over in this area. And I found super quickly, and I think it's going to be the same for you because I've watched you, you're able to very quickly find a higher quality social circles because mm-hmm. you're a fighter. High level dudes are drawn to the fighter. Have yeah. you noticed that? Yeah. Or no? Yeah. You yeah, know, no. I mean, I feel like I feel like people that are people that are doing things, the movers, the shakers, people are just drawn to the fighter. Andrew right. Tate was saying, he's like, you know, I was a kickboxer. He's like, when I stopped kickboxing and I started training, he's like, the, the club owner would invite me to his table because I was the fighter. Right, and he's right, like, right. before I know it, I'm here listening to these business conversations that I was yeah. unqualified for, but I'm listening to it. I'm like, why am I here? They yeah. want me here because I, I'm a fighter. Yeah, it's like it gives this 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 different level of allure than if you were just a volleyball player. Not like mm-hmm. that's not a big thing, but that's just not, more common. Right. To be a volleyball player, or I play soccer on the weekends. But right, like, right, right. Oh, you're a fighter. You're a fight, did yeah. you, have you find that with people or no? Uh, I do. Like uh, they're interested in it. Yeah, yeah, they're definitely interested in it. And like, like, like what you were saying earlier. It's like I feel like everyone like has that like, you know, like they want to fight too. Like so, mm-hmm. like they like, you know, they kind of like not live through you, but like they 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 want to learn. Like they want to like also like like do what you do. Yeah, they want so, they get inspired by the fact that you have that thing. Like, yeah, yeah, everybody. Yeah. This is something we, we talk about a lot, and I talk a lot about martial arts in this podcast. I had Vince McGinnis on here from Kaizen. We yeah, got Vince into martial the arts the whole time. Vince, shout out to Vince. Yeah, I love Vince. And we talked about this. I was like, "Hey, have you ever met a man that if he could press a button and be really good at fighting, he wouldn't press the button? Like, yeah. who who doesn't want that? Yeah. So everyone who's not pursuing getting better at it is just choosing to not. It's not because yeah. I don't want that. No, you all want it. Right. No one wants to be heritable." Like, who wants to know, like, hey, if someone's out and tries to take my wife, I really can't right. stop them. Right. Like, no one wants to feel like that. We all mm-hmm. want to know, like, hey, if violence shows up, I have a better relationship with violence than you do. Right. And I'm going to be able to manipulate the violence to how I want it to look. Mm-hmm. We all want that. But a lot of people aren't willing to show up and train. And so I think when men meet other men that have it and have honed it and have dedicated themselves to it, they respect it. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of respect. And it inspires them. And they go, wow. Like, it wakes up the fighter in them almost. Right. And they're like, okay. And they'll, they'll use to ask you some slow questions about it. And like, if I come in, man, am I going to get someone knocking my nose? Like, what, what kind of questions have you heard about someone asking you about that? Like, they assume uh, that they're going to have to go in there and spar with you or El Taraba or Raba. What's, what's uh, Imran. Imran, Imran. They're like, my, am I going to have my, to go in there twin. And, and spar with you or Imran at full blast? No. Yeah, yeah. Like, everyone thinks that. Everyone thinks that, like, you know, it's like, oh, like, am I going to go in there with you or, like, get punched in the face, like, right away? Like, yeah. Hey, like man, I couldn't process. give you a match. I, there's no way I could give you a match. Yeah. You're like... You wouldn't be my training partner. You yeah, know, yeah, you'd yeah. you'd come into a beginner class, right? Yeah. What what would the boxing gym look like if, if if someone showed up with no experience? Uh very welcoming. Like at least my gym, like everyone's so respectful. Like people people would be so surprised like when they walk into like an actual like a true martial arts gym. Mm-hmm. Like even if it's boxing, like someone who's like been around, like because it's so respectful, they're so welcoming and like and and you're gonna learn, like obviously it's gonna be hard, but they're not gonna they're not going to take advantage of you. Yeah. At least the good, the good ones and the right Agreed. ones. Agreed. And I something that Kaizen's a great gym. Inside yeah. Control is a great gym. Ali, the gym. What's the name of the, the gym that you're at? Uh, Fight Fitness Center. Fight Shout Fitness out to my Center. coach, Ali. Yeah, super cool dude. 
super knowledgeable passion about boxing. You know, yeah, you can yeah, tell that he's, he like lives it. Yeah, he lives and breathes it. And him. it's like the best way to put it, and I don't, you know, I, you know, we talk a lot of business on this podcast. Put it in the shoes. If you want to train at any martial arts center where you're located, they want you to keep paying every month. <laughs> so they're not going to drive you out of the gym in your first yeah. day. Like it doesn't do them any good right. to drive you away. They, they, that's not the only reason they're being nice, but I'm just saying like it is a business mm -hmm. and you want to make sure people feel comfortable to stay for the length of time. So right. most martial arts gyms are suited very well to be a welcoming culture and it means a lot just to show up and, and walk into a gym. Yeah, definitely. And and the fact that they've also been in your shoes before and mm -hmm. that they've gotten to where they're at, they understand that you're not going to come into the gym and be like, uh, like the next like world champion, right? It's right. like it takes time. Maybe, and but yeah, yeah, it could be. Yeah, yeah. For, I think everyone has it in them, you know. Yeah. Like as long as they dedicate their time and put. Do you? Yeah. So me, me and said something interesting this weekend. <clears throat> that she, she was talking about you know some people just have that thing and some people don't. And I was like, man, I hate to look at things like that mm -hmm. because I want to believe everybody can do everything. Mm -hmm. Like I need to believe that for myself. I need to believe <clears throat> that if I see someone do something and that I want it, I'm like, no, I can do it because they yeah. can do it, right? But sometimes people say like, oh, that person has that dog in them. They were born with it. Yeah. And then we might think, well, I don't have that dog in me. I wasn't born yeah. with it. I'm just meant to be a bitch. <laughs> I don't know where I stand with that. You know, <laughs> like, I don't know where, where do you stand with people that think that? Because I think everyone can wake that up. They, they t yeah. find a way to attach their motivation. But, you know, that's why martial arts is so great because it, it builds your confidence too. Yeah. Right? Oh, like, yeah. It's like, you just walk like learning. Different. Yeah, you walk different. Like, like for me, like, uh, like, just starting off like i had you know like self-esteem issues like uh, like just being like a quiet person like it, it gives you like the sense of like security and confidence mm -hmm. and then you like but where does it come from that's interesting where does that confidence come from the the work that you put in so it's not like you know like you go to a gym and be like oh like i trained martial arts it's like deep down like you know like if you're like if you're putting in the work and you're trying to like become better yeah so like like for me like for that's why fighting is the greatest example for me because it's like it's not like a test right like you can like if you don't study for this test you're gonna fail sure right it's like a fight it's like if you don't put in the work if you don't put in the road work you don't put in the mm -hmm. bag work you don't spar uh you don't you don't complete that circuit uh it's gonna show like at, in the in the end right so you get confidence from the from the work from the is process like the box is being checked off i'm completing this i'm completing this i'm completing this but there's also probably a level that don't you feel confident because now you start to know what you're capable of too. Right. Uh, you know, yeah. like confidence is huge because people talk about confidence. You can be confident because you've sold a bunch of cars and you can be confident in car sales. But like just walking through the world confidence, a lot of men are missing out how confident it feels to know that you're capable of doing things to somebody. Like yeah. they don't need to see it so grim, but it's so true. Like you, someone looks at you weird and you can... Uh, you can look in the back with a smile. You can give mm -hmm. that Mike Misa friendly, happy smile because yeah. you don't even want to interpret, oh, he's giving me a mean mug. Yeah. I can mean his mean mug with a smile. Why? Because I know that if he keeps pushing this pace and trying to mean mug me, like it, I know exactly what I can do. Yeah. Don't and you feel that? I, I do. But I feel like that comes from being humbled, though. Like at some point you need to be humbled to, D yeah. to, to yes. have that process, right? Because like if you don't, take risks or you don't like put yourself in that uncomfortable position you're never gonna know and that's why like i feel like people sometimes like have that false sense of confidence yeah because they have right? a, yeah because they don't know like like uh it's like the genius curve it's like once you realize you know i probably butchered it but like once you realize you you think you know like yeah you they, know what i'm saying right? yeah totally yeah. the genius curve the way I, the only way i've ever heard explaining is like it's like a, a flame in a cave <clears throat> mm -hmm. you have a flame in a cave and you can see what's around us. And then when the flame gets bigger, you realize the cave's so much bigger. Right. So the more you know, the real is you don't know. You don't know, exactly. Like, and that's just like martial arts. It's just yes. like fighting, right? It's like a, it's a never ending pro learning process. Yeah. And, uh, so yeah. true. And it, it just, yeah. it makes you something, there's something different about it. Um, I think obviously, you know, Milena, who is my, my love of my life, just left the room helping to set this up. She shout loves, out shout out Milena yeah. Monroe, soon to be Salazar. She loves how much I put into training. How does Amber feel about you fighting? Uh, she loves it, man. Like, she, tell me, I, she, you she, can look at her and just tell she loves the fact that she knows <laughs> that her dude can protect her. Is yeah. it feel something they feel safe with? Yeah, she. I'd say she feels safe with me. I mean, I would hope so. But I, like, 
I think she just respects like the work ethic, you know, like she supports me so much. You like, can see that by how she posts. Like, yeah, you just, can see yeah. it. And, and the, like she's like today was her first sparring. Like she's she's into boxing, like and she's really good. Like she's that's you know, awesome. Like, she, I didn't know that. As soon as we started dating, like we like I started training her. But like like she's been uh, she's become like in love with the process, too. And like that's how I know that she's like really into it as well. How does she how does she show up during training camp? Like when you're in camp and you're training, is uh does she like hang with you and work out? Does she like help with the food prep? Is she like motivating? Oh, or is she I mean she, or is she roasting you like push harder? <laughs> she does all of that. Yeah. Like <laughs> everything. Like uh she'll come to my sparring sessions sometimes, like just for like support or like um she she meal preps for me. Like the list literally never ends, like like cuts weight with me, like the week of my fight, like will be in the sauna with me, like for 30 minute sessions, like as I'm like, like, you just know, like in the most the, yeah. vulnerable state of my life. Yeah, <laughs> and that's she's clutch, there though. just like, like, right. She has my back. Yeah. You can tell and, there's uh, like, there's so much uh, pride from her with you. What she yeah, posts about you, yeah. like seeing her at the fights, like you can tell there's like a just very committed and it's, it's really yeah, cool to see yeah, it's inspiring a lot of people. Yeah. I feel I like you guys, her. yeah, right? Yeah, like, yeah. as a couple, right? Like, yeah, we, yeah. the wedding's coming up. You guys are yeah. getting married. So yeah, let's yeah. talk about that I'm, for a second. I'm very excited. How much do you feel that you coming here and meeting her has shaped your life? Uh, I wouldn't be where I am without her. Yeah, yeah. that's true, right? Yeah. But, but what is it? What makes a woman a good woman? Like, what, what is it about? You guys have an incredible um, relationship. I think a lot of people would call you guys power couple, couple goals. I see it on every photo you guys post. <laughs> it just goes crazy in the comments. Yeah, she's... And, uh, she sets that standard like high, right? It's like, like uh, she's like a boss in herself. So like she, uh, very independent. Like she's so smart. Like she's like she, she doesn't need anything or anybody. And that's the biggest thing that like gets me is like, like she doesn't need me, but like she like you know she, she like chose chooses me. You. Yeah, yeah, she and chooses me. And, and like, how does it make and, you feel? Uh, it makes me feel great. Doesn't like, that give like, you some confidence too? <laughs> yeah, it, it, it builds my confidence and it makes me want to be like a better man too. True, and yeah. it's uh, it motivates me uh, to work harder. And dude, it's, so I put true. everything into everything that I do. So true. Something that like can be said for for being in a committed relationship. It's like when a good woman chooses you like that, like dedicates herself to you. Right. The confidence that that gives you. And yeah. almost like also the responsibility that gives you is huge because it's like if you're a single guy and you're just out banging chicks, you might get confidence from like, oh, that hot girl picked me to go home with. Mm -hmm. But that's fleeting. That's gone tomorrow. She'll pick yeah. another dude. Yeah. But when a high quality woman chooses you and you're like, yo, this person is choosing me out of all the options. Yeah. I can't fuck this up. I got to live yeah. up to this. I got to yeah. like give her everything. I got to push hard. It puts this. It brings out the best in a man. I feel, right. you know. Right. Yeah, I, I totally agree, man. Like just meeting her. Like when we first started dating, I, I give like a background story. Like I, I yeah, tell me I how didn't, you met. I didn't tell like it. have like a, a lot, you know. Yeah. So like I I I wasn't like well off. So yeah. like I, I like before I met Amber, like I was living in my grandpa's basement, like in like on Long Island in New York in Brentwood. Like it was like you know I was like like probably the the bottom of the bottom. Sure. And then I I took a trip out to Florida to because I have family in uh, Seminole. Took a trip out to Florida like, just to like get away. It was like at the beginning of COVID, and uh, she was actually also visiting too, because she's from Canada, and uh, we ended up like matching on uh, Bumble. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I didn't know it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. And um, that's a huge yeah. Bumble success. Story. Yeah, yeah, super. Yeah, they yeah, should yeah. use you yeah. guys in their marketing. No, literally no expectations at all though. Like and like when we first like met up, it was just like I don't know, just like so natural. Like just like her like. How we were talking about like presence and like you, you know, felt like, it. It was just like, like, it, like a I don't know. It was just you guys like, both yeah, felt something, right? Yeah, yeah, we both did, and then we uh, we were like we saw each other every single day since that date, and like my my one week trip to Florida turned into like two months, <laughs> and then from there she drove back cross country to meet my mom. Well, not cross country, but to New York to meet my mom, and uh, like she was staying in my grandpa's basement with me. Dude. In Brentwood, like no, no AC, no, like it was in the middle of the summer and it was like a moldy. Did you feel like a little nervous about that? Like, oh, yes, she's going to run. She's because run. like we like, I've, like I always have those talks. Like, I, like it's important to like have those, you know, like, like be upfront about stuff. And um, 
like I definitely had those talks before, but I was still like nervous, you know, like, like I was like, this no, is not like what I would you're be, used yeah. to. Yeah, because she's, dude, like she's like a, a superstar. Like she was dating like neurosurgeons, and like I'm like I'm like looking yeah. at myself like I'm. <laughs> well, you're talking I'm about me, something you know? that's so important, though, Mike, which is yeah. like. You guys come from different worlds, right? Yeah. Raised in completely different worlds, kind of, like yeah, from the vibe so. I get. Yeah, yeah. I don't know too much about Amber's past, but I have an understanding. She yeah. was raised well off. Yeah. Right? And that's really good for women to be raised like that without mm -hmm. the struggle, without the pain. Women shouldn't have to have a hard life. Yeah. If a woman's had a hard life and like a strenuous life, it, it can it can make them show up in different ways. And so like for my daughter, I want her to have an easy life. Yeah. But I had a pretty tough life once my dad passed. Mm -hmm. like I, had, I went through those stages. I went right. through those broke ass stages, and right. those dishwashing jobs and all that shit. Right. And it made me great. I'm really yeah, glad yeah, now. Yeah. Like, so aren't you glad you went through that stuff I'm too? Because so, now so, you're like, yeah. you know, you're not you're not the kind of guy that you are, you're the kind of guy that I feel like you'd be good in any environment. You yeah, take yeah. Mike to a five star resort on a yacht, you're gonna have the perfect clothes, yeah, and yeah. you're gonna be like, I'll fit in here. Yeah. But if you're like well, Mike, we're gonna go here, wing house. You're like, oh, let's go. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm down for whatever, man. I yeah. can be happy in a box on the street, like literally in a box on the street. So you guys met, and so like, <clears> what, what, what the way that Amber grew up? Um, did she grow up here in Clearwater or Canada? She grew up in Canada. Okay. Yeah. Um, and uh, she moved to Florida. Like, she finished uh, high school in Florida. Okay. Yeah. So you guys, you're in the, you're in your grandfather's basement in Long Island. Yeah. And then how'd it go from there? How'd you guys both end up here? Uh, so she came and visited and met my mom, right, in New York. And she stayed there for probably like a week or two. And then uh, during COVID, like, Canada was shut down. So... That's why she was in Florida because mm. like they, but she's a dual citizen. So like she was able to like travel. And um, so she went back to Canada to like her family home in, in Ontario. And we were doing long distance for over a year. And uh, like we just made it work. Like it was like, it was, it was hard, yeah. but it was like, it was so worth it, man. Like every single night we were like, you know, like get on like FaceTime and like, you know, like go out to like date night. Like, like I would go to a restaurant and she would go to a restaurant and we would bring like, the phone. like, yeah, bring the phone, Dude, like things like that. Like it's like, thing. yeah, <laughs> it makes you but feel was, more yeah. secure in the relationship too. Right. Sure. Yeah, Imagine sure. if you're dating this beautiful girl and she's in Florida and she called you like every two days yeah. or two days a week. You're like, I don't like this. Yeah. 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 Let's your mind yeah. run. Yeah. yeah. Cause so you like, never that's, know. Yeah, that's yeah. huge. Yeah. Yeah. It was like such like a breath of fresh air from like, like, you know, like my past experiences and like, so then you guys like moved life. here to Florida, though. What caused you guys to move here to Florida? Because we were doing long distance for a while, and we were like kind of had like that moment where it's like, all right, like what, it, like what, what are we, we doing? doing? Like what, like yeah. um, we want to be together and we want to make it work. It's like, like, like what you said, like I'll go anywhere. So I was like, do you want to go to Canada? Do you want to go to Florida? And at the time, like, it was during COVID, so like I couldn't go to Canada. Okay. So like I was actually looking up like programs that I could do because it was um I could I could be a farmer. In Canada, so I was literally like legit gonna do that. Like I, I, I would be a farmer in Canada to be with just her. to like just to be with her. Yeah, that's amazing. And uh, but we ended up settling in Florida in Clearwater Beach. But um, and the best choice I ever made because I mean I met you, I met like a bunch of like great people. Oh, like, dude, it's you're, like, you're rooted in this area now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, like I, it's if I can take all my friends back in New York and bring them here, like they it completes it. It would complete it. But like yeah. I like. Just because I like everyone here is like so nice. Like it's like just the area. Mm -hmm. Like I, I love the atmosphere here. It's yeah. It's, the, the Tampa St. Pete area is amazing. You yeah. know, like I think the fight culture works really well here because a lot of gyms allow the cross training and there's a lot of gyms you can pop around to. Right. Right. Like so, what was that brought you to Kaizen when I first met you there? That was where I first met you in the mats. Will introduced us. Yeah. Will. And he's yeah, like, hey, Will's this guy Mike, you guys have the same vibe. You guys do yeah. a lot of social media yeah. stuff. You got to meet him, and he came over and introduced us. Yeah. 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 Um, I remember that day. Yeah, me too. Yeah, we do. Yeah, I remember yeah. meeting you, and it was yeah. like you were timid. And yeah. then we did we did pad work together that day, and I was like, "Oh, this dude could pound the pad." And you were yeah. kicking me so hard, <laughs> and I was blocking the kicks, and I was like, "This sucks." <laughs> I was like, "Oh, blocking this kick sucks," but I loved it. I probably pulled my hamstring now if I threw a kick. Oh, you really? You don't do kicks anymore? <laughs> no, no. Oh, really. yeah, you yeah. don't want to lose boxing, that. Just boxing, yeah. Yeah. So uh, someone starts martial arts, right? They're, yeah. they're coming to you like Mike. I uh, I feel insecure. I'm walking around. Like dudes can kick my ass. I need something to do. What martial art would you point them to? Don't be biased. If it's just boxing, tell me why. You know, I'm unbiased. Um, like if you could just pick the, one, I'd say the probably one of the the best like bases that you could have would be a grappling base, like mm -hmm. like wrestling or jujitsu, mm -hmm. just because like 
Like, then if someone's good just, at punching, you can stop them from punching you. Yeah, like you can close the distance, like you yeah. like you know, and you can like kind of like control the situation, right? Um, and manipulate it. But with fighting, it's like that's you are you automatically like we talked about this before, but like you automatically bring it to that next level, right? And it's like hard to stay calm for most people, like in those yeah. situations. But like once you like introduce like grappling, I feel like you can like kind of like control the situation without like things like escalating too bad. Yeah. Right. Agree. I yeah. agree. Yeah. Yeah. With grappling, yeah, you have the option. I think like if someone's really good at punching, which is most people's default, they want to hit you mm-hmm. and you choose like if, if you have two unskilled people, two unskilled men, they're 200 pounds and they both want to hit each other and they're both kind of have this gentleman's agreement. We're going to stand in front of each other. And we're going to hit each other. Yeah. Who's got the advantage out of these two guys? It's 50 50. Yeah, it's. Yeah. I don't like those odds. <laughs> yeah, no, you know, me I don't, yeah. Like, yeah. I don't like if we're both just standing there <laughs> yeah. throwing, any punch could be the Justin Gage T Max Holloway. Yes. And as those, like, for self defense, for life and death, for you protecting your, why risk that? So, yeah, now, exactly. of course, I would say grappling for sure, but, but to, to hate on the jitsu guys out there, because that was me for a long time, mm-hmm. I did so much jujitsu that I thought that's all I needed. Cause I was good at it. Like mm-hmm. I was way better than any dude walking around the streets. I was like, I got you know black belt level, competing in world championships, dedicated so much time. So I'm like, man, if I just get a hold of somebody, fine. And I still believe that if I got mm-hmm. a hold of a lot of pro boxers and got them on the ground, I do believe the fight would be over. I'm like, yeah. they're not going to just throw me off them. I'm going to mount them. It's over. But if you don't train on your feet and learn the range that people can punch you with, the timing. And yeah. how to put a high guard up and just yeah. deal with it, you're going to be in a lot of trouble. Oh, for sure. Like, one of the most humbling experiences would be, like, uh, boxing. Like, for me. Because, like, even, like, kickboxing, it's a striking sport. But, like, boxing is way different. Like, there's yeah. there like there's a reason they call it, like, the sweet science because there is a science to it. And, like, uh, like just, like, understanding range and angles. There's so much that goes into it. And like I'm still I'm still green in boxing, so like I'm still learning, I'm still like adapting. That's why like like uh like I'm so obsessed with it is because like I'm still like not even like you're in stage two. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm stage two. You're yeah, in stage yeah, two, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. You're good yeah. at it. You yeah. can do it, but you realize you have a lot to improve mm-hmm. when you compare yourself to the greats. Yeah, that's the oh, best yeah, place absolutely. to be, right? Yeah, you're like yeah. you're like yo, I can do this. Yeah, but then I think like how we put stage two would be like this: you feel confident to teach it to beginners. Mm-hmm. But if you were in the room with experts, you might be like, okay. Yeah, no, I, I keep my mouth shut. You might be like, stand uh, back. Yeah, that's yeah, that's yeah, a perfect yeah. level of stage mm-hmm. two. Like, I can do this and I can yeah. show you if you don't know anything. But if you, you know, who's a boxer that you look up to, a pro boxer? Like a name that we know. I don't know too many boxers' names right now, but, um, you know. Honestly, I watch. Uh, like Canelo or something, like one of the best. Like to me, Dimitri Bival, I watch a lot. He's my weight class and he's the champion in my weight class. So, like. Do you try to mimic his style? Do you mimic his movements? Uh, I try to pick apart like like a lot like a lot of guys, right? Like a lot of, of like course. style like even if it's a, a female fighter, mm-hmm. like if it's like something that I see that I like, I'll pick it up and I can use it, right? Like yeah. I, I look up a lot of like like tall, lengthy fighters, right? Like my my body That's build. That's what I was going to ask you. But yeah. um, if if you do that, my my coach in jiu-jitsu was really gave me some phenomenal advice, man. When I was a blue belt. Yeah. And I was watching a lot of Marcelo Garcia. You know who he is? Oh, yeah, guy. X-Guard. I was watching, yeah, yeah. Marcelo Garcia, and he was like, Tony. And my, my, my brother's like, Tony. He's a small <laughs> guy with big legs. You're not like him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so he was like, and I never, he's like, don't try to mimic him. Find somebody with your build, Hodger Gracie, Damian Maya. Find the guys that are like, they can, you can do what they do. And then mm-hmm. you watch them. And it was the part that one of the best pieces of advice I've ever gotten because that's what I'll do. I would watch Hydra Gracie, Damien Mine, and I'd watch them compete, mm-hmm. and I'd just mimic their style. I knew yeah. the moves. Were, oh, and that's how they do that. that. That type of style. Yeah, my game. Like, my game. Like, yeah. I think the game that I that I ended up developing a lot is now is like Gordon Ryan. I watch Gordon Ryan so much. Very similar attributes with the same height. Mm-hmm. He's not explosive, and I'm not particularly explosive. I've never been mm-hmm. a, a explosive, explosive athlete. But you're strong. And you don't need to be. Yeah, strength yeah. and 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 like I'm a gamer with the mats. Like my whole style of jiu-jitsu, and I, I train quite a bit now is like a metronome Mm -hmm. i just get a pace and i'm just consistently moving forward and consistently gripping if i mount you i'm not in a rush to submit you i'm gonna cook you there i'm gonna mount you and smother you and make you really claustrophobic until Mm -hmm. you start feeling desperate and then look for the chokes and play that game but it came from mimicking so for you with boxers Mm -hmm. how would you describe your style i have a way i would describe it but i'd probably butcher it so like Uh, i would say you're a high guard you're a distance fighter and you're a volume fighter yeah 
I wouldn't even know how to describe my, my like style. You, you keep it very high. You keep your hands yeah. up. You're definitely good about that. I feel like... You don't do what Pereira does or like... Yeah, yeah. I mean, I used to be like that. Like, honestly, yeah. like, keep my hands down. Like, like Last I feel like times I've seen you fight, you've been every, really good yeah, with the high hands. And um, that's my coach, man. Like, Ali, like, he he's very, like, particular with, ev- like, everything. Like, fine details. Like, like yeah. just staying nice and tight. Um, and you're really definitely a volume in my guy. boxing. Yeah, my, I've always been a volume guy. Yeah. Um, people get tired watching you because yeah, 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 yeah you're, you're definitely a cardio guy. You can, yeah, yeah. obviously you can see it in your build. You don't carry on a ton of muscle mass. No, you look no. strong, but you don't, you're not huge, Yeah. but it's very clear. Like you look at you yeah. and the, you're like, Oh, he's not getting tired. Like yeah, you can tell that right away. And I, and I like to like, I like that just like because like, that. I, yeah. Like, cause I, I like to like push the pace and just like how you said in jujitsu, it's the same thing in that yeah. or in running, like you want to fight at your pace. Mm-hmm. So like, wh- I'm going to, that's my biggest goal is to just fight at my pace. doesn't matter who I'm fighting. And this way, like, even if they're faster or whatever, like they're slower. Yeah. Like it, they'll eventually die out if they're fighting at my pace. That's something that where competition, martial arts and real life fights have a big variance in where it's mm-hmm. like how I was trained. Like now that I don't compete in jiu-jitsu anymore and I was always trained by a coach who was really big on us knowing real combat, mm-hmm. like don't worry about the points. If you're mounted, get out. He can punch you. Like he was, he was always teaching us that. Like you're fighting mm-hmm. is this is this is a fight, not just a sport. Right. Boxing too. Like there's rounds, you know. So there's things, but it's like if you are gonna fight for real, I think that's the best way. Not just being crazy looking for the knockout, but protecting your consciousness. I'm not right. gonna get choked out. I'm not gonna get knocked out, and I'm not gonna stop attacking you. Right. And I hope I can outlast you. That's right. kind of the way I would approach it. Right. And I feel like that'd be yours. Someone have a really hard time tiring you out. Right, and they're gonna get tired, right? right? So like, yeah, yeah, because yeah, because I know if he's if he's tired, might just some guy just angry at you. You and Amber are out somewhere, and some dude is big guy. Yeah. Um, let's say he's like two forty, six foot four. He's a big dude, yeah. and he comes out and he just starts swinging. <laughs> I feel that you would just be confident enough to like let him swing, let him swing, let him swing. Now he's tired. Yeah, maybe you throw a counter punch in there somewhere, but I feel like how long does that guy have to hit? How and how likely is he going to be able to land a shot on you going? Whoop, 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 you know, <laughs> I don't know. Like, don't you feel confident in those settings, though? Yeah, like, I definitely feel comfortable. Like, it's yeah. like it's not going to be easy to hit. And that, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. you know, that's that's the thing about when people watch the UFC, they'll guys will watch, for instance, uh, uh MMA fight, and they'll be like, oh, yeah, man, they tried to grab me and do that Dagestani shit. I yeah, would just, yeah. I'm like, dude, that dude trained wrestling his whole camp to not get taken down, right? You think you can stop someone from taking you down right. like that? Like a random guy, like, come on, yeah. bro. That's MMA not is probably the worst with that. Like the the couch coaches. Yeah, dude, yeah. everyone thinks they can do it, right? Yeah. Did you watch fights this weekend? Uh, not like I just watched the Max Holloway and the only and one Justin you saw. Gay. Yeah, it's literally the only fight I saw. So that was phenomenal. Be able to watch that. We talked about it a bit when you got here, but like, how would you break down those two guys' styles? Watching those two guys fight, they're two different two two BMF. different builds. They're yeah, <laughs> they're BS. But what? Yeah. But like Holloway, how would you describe how he, how he was approaching that? Uh. I'd say he's he's a volume fighter. Yeah. But uh, his approach on it was perfect. His game plan, uh, staying at bay, like he used his range really well. He was in and out. Uh, the thing with Justin Gaethje is like like he he gets compromised a lot. Yeah, and, he takes a he, lot of damage. He takes a lot of damage. And to like land. he does get hurt, but the thing with, with Justin is that's when he's dangerous. So like Max understood that. Until and the get, last ten seconds, out. yeah. But dude. like, and that's that. That's why I love that guy, man. He's like, just yeah. That, I, he looks so impossible to hurt. Think about how many people finish. could fight through what he fought through. Nose destroyed in the first round. Yeah, that kick and dude just kept eating shot after yeah, shot on Gage, the nose Gage split. Is a gamer, man. Like he's. Hollywood was saying that he's yeah. like, man, he's different. He's like, any yeah. less of a man would yeah. have dropped many yeah. times. Yeah. Like, I just you know, at a certain point, you realize I'm not putting him away. That's what Max says. I just mm-hmm. didn't think I was gonna be able to put him yeah. away. And it's like, and then they got the to the fight. end, and dude, the end of that fight was one of the greatest. Ones. There's a photo that I'm actually gonna get framed to go in the office. I wanted yeah. to be here. That photo of of him celebrating at the end. It's like, just that you're up, you're yeah. winning one of the biggest fights ever. Your mm-hmm. family's there. It's a huge thing, and you still take the risk. Like, yo, plant your feet and throw yeah. with me. Because he's like, this is the baddest, like the yeah. BMF belt, right? It's like we're doing dude. this for you guys. His stock grew. Dude, that was like. His stock, my yeah. face, like, to me watching. too. I was like, "What are you? What are you doing?" Poor, poor Milena <laughs> had fallen asleep because we've been up all day, and my buddy Tyler was here, and we we're pretty quiet. And then when that happened, yeah. we both scream and jump up so loud, and she's like, "What?" <laughs> <laughs> like she, she wakes up all startled about it. Yeah. It was insane to see me. Yeah, yeah, I was jumping. Yeah, that those fights for me. So there, that's where striking is 
you can't compete with it. Yeah. Grapplers can't compete with that entertainment factor. Where I would say, in general, for self-defense purposes, I believe jiu-jitsu is the best martial art in the world. Mm -hmm. For self-defense, meaning someone's attacking me, yeah. and I'm going to deal with their attacks. For rape prevention, for females, like I don't think yeah. boxing for is cops. the best approach. Cop, yeah. dude. I asked Vince this. I said, hey, Vince, and he trains a lot of female fighters too, okay, be honest. If you're a female and you want to come in here to you know, defend against a male attacking you, you think striking is the move? He's like, no. You know? It takes too long. Maybe yeah, it would, yeah. but how long do you think it would take a woman to be good? <clears throat> now, I'm not without my training to knock yeah. me out. Like I'm 215 pounds and I'm athletic, and I was an angry drunk dude at a bar. And a woman has been training boxing for what a year, year and a half. Like how long would she have to train to be able to stop me from just like if I was trying to attack her or abduct her? A long time, right? Yeah, yeah. It's hard to think, <laughs> but like with jujitsu, there's at least training for those scenarios, right? Right, right, right. But that being said, for the entertainment value of MMA. Striking reign supreme. Nobody yeah, wants yeah. to see guys grapple for five minutes. They want to see yeah. Justin Gaethje and, and Max Holloway throw it down. That's why those fights are amazing. It's like Connor's yeah. fights are amazing. People love to see it. So it's yeah. like on the financial aspect and the entertainment aspect, striking is where it's at. I agree. And that's why I like glory. That's why I, I fell in love with kickboxing because glory kickboxing. I don't know if you ever watched oh, it. Oh, yeah. I watched A lot of Vince people don't know about it. But like if you watch it, like anybody's first reaction to glory kickboxing would be like, what the hell is this? Yeah. Like it's like, all the like all the the most entertaining parts of like MMA mm -hmm. and boxing and it's just like like stand and bang yeah and no that's that's, that's just right like, that's what we love to see it we love to see it because it's 50 yeah. 50 even if two guys are skilled if two guys are skilled and they both stand and throw it is still puncher's chance mm -hmm. no matter yeah. what you got a chance yeah you can land that shot you can hit the Leon Edwards and knock out Kamar Usman yeah. in the last 10 seconds right. of the fifth round after you've been losing the whole time yeah. and that's why it's such a good sport because you're watching MMA and you're like this could end at any moment and I have no idea how it's going to end and they're throwing heat the whole Dude, fight for real and it's like when you're watching your fighter that you care about it it's way worse like if you're yeah. if you're betting on fights or like when I'm watching you yeah. I actually don't have a lot of fear of you getting knocked out because I've never seen you in trouble I've yet yeah. to see you in trouble in a fight but Still, when they're throwing hard shots and it's your boy in there, you're like, yeah. oh, fuck, oh, fuck, oh, fuck, oh, yeah, no. yeah, oh. Yeah, yeah. You feel every single one. You're like, I'm not breathing. I'm like hyperventilating yeah. in the crowd. And I'm like screaming. Yeah, that's so true. Because this past weekend, yeah, the reason so I didn't watch the fights was you because the I was cornering one of my best friends back home, Rick Schaefer. And he's probably one of the most talented like kickboxing strikers, like technically sound, like like beautiful technique. And he's a, he's an animal. And like when I watch him fight, like I get nervous for some reason, even though I know that he's like. I know why like, you get nervous because like you know what a loss means to him. And yeah, you, yeah. You don't, you're like, damn, I like, don't want him like, to feel this. Yeah, yeah. Like, just something like about like having like one of your good friends like out there and it's like. Yeah, it's not the hurt. It's that not you can't like. can't control it. I wouldn't be afraid of seeing you get hurt. Like, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. you can take a punch. It's more yeah, like, yeah. I don't want to see him take an L. You know, yeah, you don't yeah, want to yeah, see no, that. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's going to bother him. I know it's going to suck. That That's exactly what it is, you know? I remember being a, at the Worlds for, for Jiu Jitsu and I was losing my second match at Worlds was in Vegas. Mm -hmm. I'm in the pyramid and like I was just kind of, uh, it was like a late start for me. I was like three and a half minutes into a six minute round in Jiu Jitsu competition, down by points. And I'm, I just was struggling a bit and like, I don't know where I was spacey. And all of a sudden I look, kind of looked over as everyone's screaming and I see so many people from my team. And my girlfriend and everyone, they're looking at me and like it clicked. I'm like, I can't lose in front of them. Yeah, and like yeah. I like woke up mid fight, right. came back and won the match. Yeah. But it took me to realize like they're watching. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah, I yeah. can't do this, yeah. you know? <laughs> That's awesome that you had that moment though. Dude, like, yeah. Like, yeah. I had the time to look because it wasn't yeah. throwing punches. Right, I, was, right, right. I was in guard and I was yeah. able to like kind of look around and, and, and no. process. That's. That's I, the I, difference. I've had those moments in like probably in one every one of my fights, like where like I like make out kind. Of, I probably shouldn't do it, but like I'll make eye contact like outside of the ring and I'll see someone. And you're like, <laughs> yeah. oh, dude, yeah, for yeah. real. There was one of my uh, my third boxing fight. Um, it was against this guy uh, 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 Russell Kimber, and all my friends from from Long Island came to to watch me fight. And like I haven't seen them like before the fight or whatever, and like I I knew they were coming, but like it was like it was like twenty of them, like, and they all came out to like support me, which is crazy. But, you feel pressure? Uh, no, no, no. Okay. They they all fight too, so like I don't know. I've I've been doing it for a while that like I don't really like feel that yeah. pressure now. Like in the beginning, I used to get so nervous yeah. like with everyone who I knew watching me because I would like 
you know, I do things that like I don't do in training and like try to like impress them. Right. But I got over that. But uh, I had this moment where like I had the dude in the corner and I like he was like literally like, curled up into like like a shell and I like look out and I see like my boy Devin Devin Worth <laughs> and he's like yeah like he he just had the, we just had this moment and I like I like looked at him and I like I like nodded like the nod of approval. <laughs> <That's> so awesome. <laughs> and that's then awesome. I finished it like right after that, dude. That's, it was it is such amazing. a funny moment. It's like competing like that. Like I, I do. I think going into the striking competitions is more than what we did with jujitsu. I competed in some big events and some prestigious events, but I'm going out there to grapple. Like yeah. no one's hitting me. Yeah. So like the worst that happens is like it taps. So like yeah. I feel like I know ball, the man. pressure and the training of it, but it not not that same level. But in any level, competing at any level as a man is so unbelievably important. Yeah. And the one on one thing. That's what I always tell people. Like the joke that I made is I'm like. People who play with balls end up fat when they're older. And it's like if you play baseball, soccer, football, basketball, any of those ball sports, mm-hmm. college is done, homie. You're probably yeah. done. Yeah. Like you're not going to be 30 years old out playing basketball with your homies too often. Some people do it, but it's not yeah, yeah, nearly yeah. as common. Yeah. But like it's a stand up. The martial arts gyms give you that place that you can continue to train and compete if you want. Yeah. It even at an amateur level through your 30s and your 40s and, and have yeah. this community, you know. And yeah. I think it's it's so it's so key to have because you test yourself like business is going very well for us in the last few years. And I think about it because like when shit starts to get crazy and, and stressful and I'm like, I know what this is. This is, yeah, this. Yeah. I just got to yeah, find the right move. Yeah. I got to find the right move yeah. here. You know, like yeah. I don't own Ravel when I yeah. talk to some people that I can tell them like, Oh, you weren't an athlete. And so there's a, a, a business conference I went to and this guy's a triathlete. He was saying, he's like, don't forget we're business athletes. He's like, business is a sport too, and your endurance matters. He's big on the endurance training for business. He's like, if you get tired by 7 p.m., you're making decisions differently. You're making mm-hmm. decisions with weakness. He's like, yeah. but I'm not. I'm going for my runs at 7. I'm like, wow, that's a right. good perspective. Yeah, I love that, actually. You know, yeah. having something to compete will make you better all areas of life. So what's in the future for you with boxing? Do you have anything coming um, up? Yeah, I have a fight uh, June 15th okay. in Tampa at, nice. the, at the Hilton downtown. Opponent announced? Uh, not, not, not an opponent yet. Okay. Um, but... It, do you have uh, a lot of people that are that are wanting to fight you, or do you or do you guys do the matchmaking? Your coach does it. Who helps you with know. that? My my coach Ali. He's my manager. My coach. My everything. And so he'll just say, "Hey, we're gonna fight this guy." And yeah, like, like yeah. he'll he'll just, yeah exactly. Anybody like, usually that you like would turn down? I'm sorry. Would you turn someone down? No, no, I haven't. You can ask him. Like he'll he usually presents like like one, two, or three like opponents like possible. And like for example, like that draw. Like I had like two other like opponents who were like yeah like mediocre like but like that guy was undefeated like number twenty in the country it's like no nah, like pick the hardest like guys I, right? pick the hardest guy like yeah I, chase I know the Holloway route yeah, I think that's yeah. the route you do chase the Holloway like yeah. Holloway's been such an absolute barbarian and, and exactly what he said he's like this is the kind of shit that gets your name in the history books yeah 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 his last twelve opponents were like very high level right and I love that thing he said with the press conference with Gaethje and they're like the way he's like listen. It's like, if I were born different times, I'd have been a gladiator. And last yeah. time I checked, they didn't walk around with scales asking yeah. how much you weighed. Same, you know? Man. And yeah. it's like, uh, yeah. that's so true. Like, yeah, if you yeah. think I you're good, you're good. You're good. Yeah. You know, that matters. So, June, you have a fight coming up. How many times are you trying to fight a year? Uh, as long as I'm healthy, I'll fight every month. Okay, but, so that's um, about how, how long you need? A month or so, and you can get back in? Yeah, it really depends on how the fight goes. Like, uh, I, I have a lot to work on, like, as always. But, um, it depends on how the fight goes. Like if, uh, like if I execute the game plan that we that we came up with, and like it was a good outcome, then then we can like go into the next one and like reassess, right? Or like say if like I didn't like perform too great, like we can like kind of like take a step back, like look mm-hmm. at look at things. Like that's that's kind of like how I want to take it. Um, I don't really look at age as a factor, like in anything. Like um, like Arter Bitter Biev, like he's about to fight uh, Dimitri Bivol. And they're the two best in my weight class in the world. And they're fighting June 1st. But Demet- uh, Arter Bitterbiev, he's 37 years old, 38. And he's still, like, he has 38 knockouts. Like, he's knocked out yeah. every single person that he's fought. He's still going strong. Like, there's no mm. no age limit for me. You just brought up probably the most interesting paradox of martial arts. And think about this, right? It's like, this is a Japanese quote that says, setting out on a martial arts path is like getting on a boat that you know was going to sink. Mm-hmm. And so it's like we're beating up our bodies and we're training. Mm-hmm. And so by the time your knowledge grows to the level where you have true fight wisdom, well, now your body's facing aging. Yeah. 
And when your body's in the perfect prime, well, now you're still naive to all these things. You right. don't know, like, like the idea would be like if you take a coach's mind and put him in the fighter's body, like right. what that would be. Yeah. Coach's level of experience, he's seen things, he knows how to improve. Yeah. So like that's the that's the paradox is like as we age, mm -hmm. we know more than we ever did. Right. We have way more experience, but yeah. now our body isn't what it was. Yeah, yeah. You know. Yeah, I I agree with that for for sure. It's like we're trying yeah. to find that place. So that's like luckily nowadays we're in the place where we have all these places where you can learn recovery and recovery is common knowledge and people know how to take care of themselves yeah. versus the previous generation. Mm -hmm. Our parents' generation didn't have the exposure. Now yeah. we know. So you can age a lot slower because yeah. you know when to ice, when to stretch, knees over toes guy, guys like yeah, the yeah. cold punch guys. They've made these things so mainstream that people are preventing way bigger injuries now. And mm -hmm. they're hopefully you're going to see some of the best lot. athletes ever yeah. because at a younger age, they have more knowledge, but even at an older age, they have more physicality. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. You know, yeah, they're not getting yeah. hurt. I think that's that's the that's the key. You see guys, you know, John Donaher, who's the yeah, jiu -jitsu yeah, guy. Yeah, of course. Imagine if you took his mind and put him in like a twenty one year old specimen's body. It's yeah, like yeah. what would that look like? You yeah. know, but his body can't his knees are broken down, right, he doesn't right, have right. the ability to train. Yeah. So it's so it's interesting, interesting, man. Yeah. I love it. You're leading the way. You're doing you're yeah. inspiring a lot of people. You got a huge fan base. Thank you, man. People love to show up and watch you fight. I think that, you know, it's only growing too as as the promotions grow and as these local boxing approaches get bigger. Yeah, I appreciate all the support, man. It's like Yeah, Mike Meese yeah. is gonna be a name that people are gonna show up to see. How can people support you now? So if someone's watching this podcast, of course they're gonna go follow your social media, but yeah. But what else can they do? Follow you? Can they come to your fights? Like what do yeah. you want people to do for you? Uh you can come out, support my fights. Like yeah, like you don't have to even like come there. Like like I, I know like Tickets get like expensive and stuff, so like even you want to come there, it's dope. <laughs> even like messaging or like whatever, man. Like uh, like if you like, yeah, just love it. Just are any you type of support? Are you currently seeking any sponsorships? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. definitely seeking sponsors. Um, yeah, and any kind of industries that you think they'd be in? Is it like a supplementation, apparel? Like you have, you got a lot. You got a lot of people that I support do. you. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, fitness modeling. You open to fitness modeling for other companies? Fitness modeling. Yeah. I can't fit in this model. Yeah, he can. He's <laughs> just saying that. No, no. If you have a company and you want to the model for you, hit him up. Guys, Mike <laughs> Misa, go check him out. We'll tag his social medias below. Dude, it's been an absolute pleasure. I'm Thank sure you, people brother. love hearing that part of your story. And I'll see you next time, my dude.